Hello guys, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I'm going to present the work uh, Taming Limits with Approximate Networking. Uh, just to introduce myself, I am Vinayat Kabir. I currently serve as an Associate Professor at the Information Technology University in Pakistan. And this work is in collaboration with my team of collaborators at the Computer Lab at the University of Cambridge. And uh, this work is essentially aiming to uh, mitigate the effects of limits with a new approach of networking that we call approximate networking. So uh, I'm not going to dwell too much on limits because I think this is a specialist audience that understands this term very well. And this is also the second day of this workshop. So I'll start by discussing the idea of approximate networking. And I will begin by saying that this uh, uh, concept is essentially um, a porting of the idea uh, approximate computing to the, to the networking world. So in recent times, there has been a lot of interest in using approximation as a degree of freedom through which we can optimize computing systems. And by compromising on the accuracy slightly, we can gain many other benefits. So this is in a sense the idea of using good enough services and we will see that uh, in computing and in networking and in many other parts of uh, human life uh, we make use of approximation and it is often very useful because with approximation we get many benefits. Uh, just uh, as a concrete uh, example we um, Note here that you know results in uh, approximate computing have shown a 50-fold energy efficiency gain with an accuracy loss of only 5% for certain applications. So this shows the kind of gains that we can get. So to set up the stage and to talk about approximate networking, uh, I need to talk of three concepts. The first concept is the Pareto principle, also known as the 80-20 rule. Uh, the second concept is the tainter curve, which highlights the downside of too much complexity. And finally, a concept from health sciences, uh, something known as iatrogenics, in which we talk of the externalities of technology. Uh, whenever we have an intervention, it also has certain side effects, and this is very well known in medical sciences. So I start by talking about the Pareto Principle, and this is illustrated on the slide. Uh, we see here that there is a non-linear relationship between the effort and the results that result, uh, result from applying the, these efforts. And typically what we see is that most of the results come only from a subset of the contributing factors. And this can be codified in the 80-20 rule, uh, which is uh, written on the screen. And we see that, that potentially there are many factors, but among the factors to be considered, there will usually be a vital few and a trivial many. So uh, the general idea here is that we should be optimizing for the vital few. And it also highlights uh, the law of diminishing returns. So this uh, is important for our concept of approximation because you know we don't need to have ideal services because even if we were to strive for an ideal networking service, we'll be having diminishing returns beyond a certain threshold. So the take home message here is that instead of aiming for 100% ideal networks uh, with uh, you know, very high throughputs and very low latencies, uh, we should focus on good enough services and we can get there with considerably less effort and also less negative externality. Uh, the second concept I want to talk about is the Tainter curve, which has also been discussed in another paper uh, in the same workshop, uh, in which the effect of over-technologizing is reflected in a, in a curve, in which we see that while initially with some complexity, we see certain benefits, but beyond a certain threshold, uh, if the society or a system becomes very complex, uh, we see even uh, uh, not only diminishing returns, but also a collapse. 
and this is very dangerous and it is you know very important that we recognize this and also see that you know in some way our networking is also becoming very complex so the take home message here would be that if we have a very uh, over engineered system and a, you know a lot of technology the society becomes very fragile and brittle in the face of future black swans and in uh, from this i mean that you know in in the future you may have unpredictable extreme events happening and the results of those would be very drastic if we have a fragile society or a very complex society the third concept i want to talk about is iatrogenics and uh, this is uh, from the field of health sciences and very relevant to technology we see that uh, it's not always the case that uh, by putting in more effort and more resources we'll get more response and we see here that uh, there is this uh, curvy linear uh, relationship uh, it's not always the case that uh, by increasing the dose the dose you would have increased response a certain point comes uh, when you know having a medicine in copious amounts would actually make it a poison and that is uh, very important to recognize and all these three concepts are very important and highlight why approximate networking is important in the context of limits so the take home message from this last concept is that more technology may actually be less useful and this highlights the problem that you know abundance and having a lot of resources is actually uh, counterproductive in many scenarios because it may engender certain features that are not desirable for example if we see uh, the society today we see that we have never been richer uh, as a collective uh, you know the humanity has never been richer but we also have never been in more debt so the idea is that we're suffering from the problem of overconsumption and in some way um, we posit that the same thing is happening in networking as well that uh, we are over consuming our resources and we can do much better by scaling down on the complexity of our systems so uh, we cannot start to talk about approximate networking and I would like to highlight that approximate networking is not a, a new idea. It has been there in many different ways and shapes. Uh, the new idea is that we are presenting the centrality of this idea in the context of many new applications including limits but there are other applications of approximate networking. Uh, a principal application that we are interested in is using approximate networking to get networking services to everyone and for that we would have to take various degrees of, uh, of context appropriate trade-offs, another concept that we propose. So as it, existing examples of uh, approximate networks we see the, you know, the best effort internet is itself uh, using approximation because it recognizes that we will not always be able to have reliable services and we have many other examples <coughs> in hardware and in software for example we make use of bloom filters which is uh, an approximate set membership query uh, algorithm we make use of UDP we have UDP light we have delay tolerant networks which uh, demonstrate another flavor of approximate networking so with approximate networking <coughs> we are interested in providing services that are qualitatively similar to what we would expect and the important thing is that the user and the application quality of service is satisfied so uh, to just to reiterate this point we say that if we relax the requirements of ideal networking we can obtain many advantages uh, for example, in terms of reducing cost, complexity, um, and also reducing negative harmful externalities, and also in increasing efficiency. <coughs> so, uh, we can now highlight the uh, approximate networking simplicity imperative. So, as I've highlighted 
you know, as the society becomes more complex, we need simpler solutions because these simpler solutions are more robust and uh, they can withstand an uncertain future. So, uh, you know, we know of uh, something known as the Occam's razor, uh, which basically is used for model and deciding which models are most appropriate uh, so that we can avoid overfitting. We say that the simplest model is often the most plausible model. In a similar vein, we propose the approximate networking razor through which we aim to reduce the complexity of networking architectures and protocols and algorithms. And the, the idea can be stated that the simplest network, uh, be it architecture, protocol or algorithm, that satisfies the desired quality of service is the most desirable approximation. And in some way, we can think of this as, uh, you know, akin to uh, the lasso algorithm in machine learning. We know that the lasso algorithm is a regularization technique through which we penalize complexity and reduce the importance of certain factors so we have simpler models. So in a way, approximate networking aims to simplify protocols, architectures and algorithms by reducing some complexity by um, reducing certain factors and certain uh, features that are not essential and uh, by removing them uh, our idea is that uh, the solution would be much more scalable as it becomes simpler and we see all uh, across us in society uh, in many different aspects we see that you know the good enough phenomena in which uh, good enough services are increasingly replacing complex services especially when they come with certain convenience. So we see that MP3 has replaced, almost replaced the market of CD uh, quality uh, audio. And it, it's uh, you know, a given that uh, the MP3 quality cannot uh, match the quality of CD quality music, but still people prefer MP3 because of the convenience and the cost and other benefits that we get. We also see the same thing in, uh, you know, people moving towards uh, voice over IP services instead of uh, services uh, from the public uh, switch telephone network. Uh, we also see that uh, we are increasingly uh, using simpler technologies because of the uh, sustainability of these products. For example, uh, in many advanced countries, people are taking recourse to uh, uh, riding bikes uh, instead of uh, cars. And this is again an example of an approximate technology. We are not using a very high tech technology. We are using a low tech technology because it gives us certain benefits. <clears throat> So we come now to the central idea of this paper in which we propose uh, the idea of context appropriate trade-offs and we say that it is not always the case that the high-tech solution is more desirable. It may be the case that an approximate low-tech uh, solution may be much better and we see that uh, trade-offs have been the staple of the networking industry for many many years and we see that many uh, trade-offs are intrinsic to networking. For example, the latency versus throughput trade-off. We know that we can get increased throughput if we can compromise on latency. And this is highlighted, uh, for example, in the sneaker net concept. Uh, we also know of the trade-offs between performance and cost efficiency, the trade-off between fidelity and convenience, the trade-off between privacy and free services. Uh, the trade-off between coverage and consumed power. Uh, and we also see that there are many spectrum of connectivity options and user requirements. So just as an illustration, we point out here that the upcoming 5G standard of wireless is aiming for you know, great advances in throughput and great reductions in latency. But we have to also note that there are many different types of requirements. There are certain applications that can work with 
latencies on the order of minutes, for example, smart meters. And for those applications, it's not necessary that we over-engineer a network for a very low latency. There will be certain applications that have low latency requirements. Uh, there are other applications that can work very well with high latency. And similarly, the case with throughput, there, there is orders of magnitude in difference between the requirements of different applications. And similarly, for many other attributes. And uh, when we talk of context appropriate trade offs, uh, it may also be appropriate that we do not use any technology at all. So, this has been highlighted uh, previously in literature. So, uh, if we consider this, then an important problem would be how do we outsource some of the things that we do on the current internet and uh, outsource them to less costly and less energy intensive offline methods. So, this context appropriate trade offs would then encompass all of high tech and low tech and even no tech solutions. Um, there are many open questions, and uh, through this work, we have. Um, raised many questions. Uh, we have not provided many solutions and we recognize that, but we're working on coming up with uh, you know, concrete case studies in which we can apply principles from approximate networking. Some open questions are uh, you know, even something as basic as how do we define context? And uh, there may be many contexts in a single interaction or in a sin single system there may be a context of the user, there may be a context of the application, there may be a context of the service provider. So there are many contexts and some of the times they may be in conflict. So individual versus society context has to be matched. Uh, we have to quantify <coughs> when our approximation is working and when it is not. And uh, we have to ensure that we are not approximating away the factors that are important for the performance of networks. Another important issue is how do we dynamically control the approximation trade-offs according to the network condition and we also have to design proper incentives for everyone to behave in a way that is optimal. So to conclude, uh, I would like to just stress that you know this deep-rooted uh, reliance on infrastructure is making networks really fragile and when we take into account that many of our energy sources are coming from non-renewable depletable sources then our society is vulnerable to a disruptive collapse and we propose that the idea of approximate networking uh, through its simplicity imperative can help in such a world that is burdened with limits and uh, it may be the case that good enough services are good enough in such settings. So thank you very much for your time. This is all I wanted to say and I am uh, interested in hearing your feedback and comments. Thank you very much.